Hello fellow 3D enthusiast, my name is Ian, and today I'll be sharing a little bit more of an advanced way to do some more vanishing effects. Last week we tried it with the locked off tripod, which is pretty simple, but let's face the facts here, you're not always going to have a tripod handy, and we're not always going to have locked off footage. So it's really important to learn how you can do this with a moving camera. And while fading somebody out is kind of fun and cool looking, there's actually a lot of practical reasons why you might need to use this technique. So I could think of a few off the top of my head. If you accidentally get some of your equipment in the shot, like a microphone or something, you might want to just be able to erase that, get it out of the shot completely. And with this technique, you could pretty painlessly pull something like that off. But let's be honest, nobody's going to click in on tutorial on how to remove a microphone from a shot. So let's get to the vanishing effects. <laughs> All right, so let's just start by going to the edit menu, going new, and opening a new VFX editing situation. <laughs> I'm going to start by opening up my footage here. Okay, so if we take a look at this, it's actually pretty short, but that's all right. I'm going to go to the end frame here and go down to playback, set end frame. And if we just kind of clean up our situation here, I'd like the timeline here. And we don't really need this stuff up here. So I'm going to collapse those windows. But if we look at the footage, you can see it is definitely handheld movement. It's not very much location shifting, so it's mostly just kind of rotating around a little bit. My mom was holding it on the deck, so shout out to mom. Thanks for helping out. Another thing that might be a little bit noticeable is that this footage is just kind of bland and not very good contrast. And that is because right now our color management is set to filmic. So let's set that to standard. And as soon as you do that, you can kind of see the tones are a little bit richer, which is nice. What I'm going to start by doing here in this footage is tracking a couple of points so that we can stabilize it. And you can see as I'm walking, I'm going to disappear somewhere around here. So I'd like to stabilize the footage around here. So I'm just going to take a look at the end here. I think I'll just track this leaf here. To place these trackers in, I'm holding down control and hitting the left mouse button, just so you're aware. So I'm going to track it backwards. There we go. If you hit L, that'll lock your view to the track, and you can just kind of watch it, make sure it hasn't slipping all over the place. This looks like a pretty good track. At the start, let's just track this leaf. Track it forward. Nice. So we got two tracks, and they're looking pretty good. So we'll use these for stabilization. There's one more track I'd like to do, and that is actually on my hoodie right here. But we're going to plop one down right around my neck here and just track that. Whoop, there it goes. And I'm going to track it backwards so it's throughout the whole footage. And if we lock to that, just take a look. It looks like that tracks pretty nicely. Cool. And we're just going to use this to make sure that a mask is following me correctly. And let's do that next. I'm going to go up here where it says tracking and switch that to mask. And now we're in the masking editor. I'm gonna go new. I'm just gonna hold control once again and then drag the left mouse button. That drops in a handle. And then I'm just gonna do like three handles, two around my feet, and then one up here. And if we go Alt-C, that'll close the circle. Um, I'm just gonna check to see where my feet are the farthest out. Do something like this, put it there. Cool. Now I'm gonna hit A to make sure all these handles are selected. I'm going to select this track by holding down shift and then clicking it with left mouse button. And then I'm going to go control P. And now our mask should be parented to the tracker. So that helps a little bit. We don't have to animate it very much. Let's just make sure none of the limbs are going outside. This foot is a little bit too close for comfort here. So I'm just going to extend the mask a little bit. And that looks pretty good. To give this mask a little bit of feathering, I'm going to hold down control and shift and then just drag the left mouse button on one of the handles. And this little green boundary is the edge of the feathering. Nice. All right, so we got our two tracking points for stabilization. We got our tracking point for the mask, and we've got our mask set. I'm going to go back into the tracking view, and I'm just going to set up some 2D stabilization on this footage. So I'm going to go over to the tab here that says stabilization. Check this box here, and let's check rotation and scale as well. I'm going to start with this here. I'd say that can be our location. And then this track can be our rotation and scale track. Nice. Now that's all we need to do in the movie clip editor. Let's go over to compositing and just set up some basic nodes here. Let's check the use nodes box. And let's actually get rid of this here. Don't need that. And let's scooch our timeline up a little bit. 
And if we go home on the keyboard, that just plays things out nicely. We'll keep render layers around, but we don't really need it right now. So I'm just gonna cut that off by holding control and dragging my right mouse through it. What we do want is our footage. So I'm gonna go Shift A, Input, Movie Clip. And let's just select our movie clip here. We've already got that imported into Blender. If you have Node Wrangler enabled, you can go Control Shift and click on a node and then view it. I'm gonna do that here with my movie clip. And I'm just gonna connect both of these nodes up to the composite and then just drag through holding down Shift and right mouse. And that'll just put this nice little Y in here. Okay, what we're gonna do is stabilize it, put in our clean plate so that it looks like I'm not there anymore and then destabilize it so it's got its normal rotation back. That's the basic idea of what's gonna go on. So let's start by going Shift A distort and stabilize 2d and let's select our movie clip here so it knows what to stabilize you can see everything shifts a little bit and that's just it stabilizing if we go shift d and duplicate this node drop it here at the end and then invert that will immediately put it back to where it was before and right here in the middle is where we're going to do our magic so i'm going to go shift a add in a mix node here if we go color and mix you can find that there and i'm also going to go shift a add in an input and a mask node and let's just make sure we have our mask selected here i'm going to actually duplicate this stabilized 2d so that our mask is moving along with the footage and then i'm just going to take this output and put it right into the factor of this mix node and now you can see we've got this white spot right here eventually we'll have it so that that's just grass and nothing is there and it'll be covering me up and look like i'm invisible what I'm gonna do now is get a couple of images, one where I'm all the way over here on one side, and then one where I'm all the way over on the other side. And that'll give us some nice patches of clear grass that we can just do some basic stuff with. So to get this clean plate, let's go to our stabilized 2D node and then just plug that right here into this node. And let's get those frames that I was talking about. So I'm gonna start at like frame 16 maybe, when I'm all the way over here, I'm gonna go F12, and you can see we've got this render, it's stabilized, and I'm over here. So I'm gonna save this with Shift and Alt and S. I'm just gonna call this left. And then let's go to another point in our timeline where I'm all the way over on the other side. I'm gonna hit F12 once more. And remember, Shift, Alt, S, and I'm gonna call this one right. Cool, so now we have a left frame and a right frame. That's pretty good. The way I'm gonna merge these two together is actually by going into the Layout tab. If we go General and Layout, that adds a new tab in up here. And we can just take this camera and actually go seven on the number pad to go into top view. Control, Alt, and zero on the number pad so that our camera locks to our view. And here in the camera settings, let's just shift this from perspective to orthographic so that it's flat and we don't have any perspective going on. Now using the import images as planes add-on, I'm gonna go file, import, images as planes. And let's navigate to those images we just saved. I'm gonna select right first and let's make sure we hit shade list. And I'm gonna hit S to scale this up right as close as we can get to the border. Now, if we look at the rendered view, you can see it's just our image here. That's pretty nice. I'm using Eevee, so this is really quick to render, which is good. If we go G and Z, that'll just move it down a little bit and we can import our other image. So I'm gonna go file, import, and let's just import left here. All right, that's right on top there. If we go back into the camera view, once again, let's scale this up right as close as we can get. Very nice. Now, if we look here in the 3D view, we've got both of these kind of stacked on top of each other. And what we need to do is line them up. So if we go zero back into camera view, let's just split our view here and let's take a look at the shading nodes for this. If we go shader editor, we can see we get this kind of messy looking thing here. If we just unplug the factor for a second, we've got a 50-50 between transparent and the straight image, so we can actually see through it. I'm gonna go Control and Space, so I can see this a little bit better. And with this top one selected, I'm gonna grab it and just kind of move it around until we line up pretty nicely. If you zoom in real close, you can kind of see when it's not aligned since it's semi-transparent now. And I think this is actually pretty nicely lined up, so that's cool. Now that we finished that out, let's plug our alpha back into the factor. That really doesn't do anything, it's just solid shading, but that's okay. And now let's do a really dirty trick. I'm gonna select this top plane here and go back into our camera view. I'm gonna go tab, so we get into edit mode, and I'm just gonna cut this out. So let's go K and just hit like four vertices and a square, not a square, just a some unidentified shape. <laughs> Once I've got this roughly cut out here, I'm gonna hit enter to enable the knife tool. I'm gonna go up here into face select, select this face with left mouse button and X, faces. And you can see the grass is just showing right through there. 
Now, if you didn't know that there was a hole here, you really wouldn't be able to tell. If we zoom in real close, you can kind of see this line here. And if we select the top line, you can see where it is. But to the untrained eye, this is pretty invisible. So nice, we've got ourselves a clean plate. Now, if we hop back into compositing real quick, we can see we've got our render layers tab here still. If we just take this and plug it into the composite and the viewer node, that's gray. But if we hit F12, that'll render out this image that we just created. And from here, we can just go Shift, Alt, S, and save that out as our clean plate. Okay, from this point on, we don't really need this anymore, so I'm gonna X that out. I'm going to plug in our stabilize node again, and back to making this egg turn into grass. I'm just going to import that clean plate, Shift A, input, and image. And here we go. If we just view this, we can see there's not a whole lot of difference. It's just our clean plate going on. Now with this, I'm just gonna plug it right into this bottom socket of our mix node. And if we take a look, I am now completely not in frame because our mask is controlling where this shows through. And if we mix it all together, it's just covering me right up. Now that's very nice. I'm not in the shot anymore, but what if I want it to be animated so that I'm there at one point and then I kind of fade out through the animation? Well, that's a pretty easy effect to do. If we just duplicate this mix node with Shift D, I'm gonna plop it right here in between the stabilize and the other mix node. And I'm just gonna take this original stabilize 2D node and I'm gonna put that into the other side of the mix node. Now when this factor value is one, I won't be in it because I'm all covered up. And when it's zero, it goes back to the original footage and you can see me appear there again. So if we go to a point earlier in the animation here, say frame 28, I'm starting to walk and I'm just gonna hover my mouse over this factor value, hit I to add in a keyframe. And by the end over here, let's say I wanna disappear. So I'm gonna change this value to be one and hit I once again, that drops in another keyframe. And if we look in the middle here, you can see I'm kind of fading out. Pretty nice. Now, if we view at the end here beyond our stabilized 2D, you can see we get all of our camera motion back and things are working pretty well. Now, all we have to do is set a place where we want it to render and go to render, render animation. Now, if you're interested in learning more about visual effects, I've created a tutorial for you. And in this tutorial, I'll share how you can use Blender to integrate your CG objects into your live action footage. There's five different tips that I go over, and I really think this can help you out quite a bit. Now, to get this tutorial, there's a link in the description, and that leads to an email signup page. And this is just a good way to keep connected so that you can be the first to know when I upload a new tutorial. But hey, other than that, I hope you have an excellent day, and cheers!